Next screen. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not apollo me. In this scripture, they use perish. Should not apollo me. It could have said, shall not be lost, or shall not be rendered useless, but shall have everlasting life. Whoever believes on him should not, should not, should not ever be rendered useless. You do not have to have a useless area in your life due to the fact that you've accepted Jesus as your Savior. I think that's pretty good news. You want to see another one? Got changed again when the translators went to work on Apollo. I mean, look at this one. John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to Apollo me. English translators said destroy. Let's read it the way Thayer's Greek lexicon might say it. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to render you useless. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. What's more abundant than being useful? Than being from going from a place of uselessness to usefulness. You see the difference? There are many people who feel useless. And it's because they've been stolen from and they're being killed in the, in the realm of their mind, in the realm of their confidence, in the realm of their spirit. Because the thief, and by the way here, the thief is not the devil. John chapter 10 never says that the thief is Satan. John chapter 10 says that the thief is anyone who comes in by any other way than the door. Jesus even goes on to say, all that have come before me are thieves and robbers. He didn't say thief, Satan is the thief and the robber. He said anybody that tries to bring you into abundant life but doesn't bring you in through a finished work is thieving you. Did you know we've been robbed in the church far too long because we've been told there was a way to rest that had you having your hands on the wheel and then somehow you would find peace if you could only do enough. You were stolen from, you were cheated, and you've been rendered useless. We've been working so hard for so long in the church that we have, by and large, been rendered useless. We have used up our usefulness because we've been stolen from a thief has come along and made something that we can do look better than what Jesus can do. we got a rich young ruler mentality. Lord, I'm here. What good thing do you want me to do to have eternal life? And Jesus is trying to walk us off the ledge. You sure you want to do good? There's none good but the Father. Why would you want to try to do good in order to get good? You've been doing that your whole life. Or we can have the Zacchaeus mentality where we receive with joy. Now, I find this pretty fascinating myself. I find it pretty interesting that Apollo pops up over and over in the Greek New Testament and then falls into different translations as we read it. But if you start to see that word through the lens of something being rendered useless, I think you'll start to see why Jesus is seeking and saving that which is lost. That doesn't mean he's just out here today seeking and saving what we would call sinners because what we call sinners are sometimes children of Abraham. Did you notice that? What we call sinners, they lumped him right in there with the woman caught in the act of adultery because that's what they called her. Jesus said, but he's a son of Abraham, but he's a lost son of Abraham.